All right. Good morning, everyone. Oh, welcome. Welcome to the session. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead a word of prayer. Yes, go ahead. Anybody can lead, please. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Rebega. All right, so we've been talking about urban church planting. Uh, we looked at you know many areas uh, uh, from the beginning. We looked at you know how it, it's important to understand the definition and objectives of church planting. Why are you starting a church? What does Jesus say? You know, when he said, go and make disciples, church planting is one of those ways. Uh, then we also looked at how uh, God sees a certain city. Uh, God has a heart for every city, every nation. God has plans, purposes. And when you and I, as believers, we begin to launch out a ministry or our own church, we, we must be able to be sensitive, develop the ability to be sensitive, to uh, have a heart for the city, right? Uh, Jesus cried over Jerusalem, and we see in the Old Testament, uh, Jeremiah had a heart uh, for what was happening in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, and so when when you and I as believers, we, we God is you know asking us to pioneer a ministry, have a heart for the city. Uh, a love for the people, a love for the city. That's very important. Then we looked at two important factors in, in terms of church planting. One is the natural dynamics, right? Now, uh, remember, ministry is spiritual, but it's, there's also the natural, right? The Bible is spiritual, but also has a lot of natural things that we have to do, right? Um, and so the, the, we looked at natural dynamics demographics of the place, uh, economy, historical background, political system, what is happening, understand them, right? Uh, and get a feel of the city, get a feel of the people, the, 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 the language, the culture, get a feel of it, right? Now, especially if you are uh, planning a church in a city where you have been you know, born and raised or you're familiar with the city, uh, then we don't have to spend much time. But if, if you're looking at starting at another city or, not, or another nation uh, it involves a lot of uh, you know background work of studying the natural dynamics uh, uh, now now we're not saying that you know uh, only if we study the natural dynamics can we do well in the spiritual no uh, it, 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 you know we need to be wise we need to walk in wisdom right so uh, what did the apostle paul do wherever he went he you know, to the remember to the uh, to the people of Crete, he says, "Your own poets have said this, right?" So he studied about uh, the poets of Crete, and he looks at uh, in in the book of Acts. He says uh, he goes to uh, Athens and Corinth. He's able to look at the natural dynamics, right? And and so it's very important that we do that. And even as we do that, that's our background. Our main standing is on the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Natural dynamics is for us to know how to do ministry, but our dependence is completely uh, on the spiritual, on the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Because only the Holy Spirit can minister, can touch people's lives, right? Uh, and so uh, remember that 
you know, Paul says, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers of darkness, against uh, Satan, right? And we looked at Revelations 2 and um, and th what the spiritual dynamics were of those of the church in Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, and Philadelphia, right? So you and I can, when, when we plan to look at a church pioneering ministry, try to find what is the spiritual dynamics of that city or that area. It could be human trafficking, prostitution, uh, uh, you know, what is happening, bonded labor, trafficking, drugs, alcohol abuse, domestic violence, child abuse, uh, you know, all of these things. Uh, and then you and I can uh, really pray that God will begin to uh, you know, open doors and the work of the Holy Spirit will minister to them. Right now, one of the books that I can recommend you to read uh, now it does not talk about uh, spiritual dynamics or natural dynamics, but we but we see that in the book, and that's the cross and the switchblade, where this young pastor goes into New York City from the you know uh, villages of. Uh, I think he was in another city, but he goes into New York, into the city, uh, and uh, you know how he began to understand the dynamics, what's happening there, and he was able to, you know, balance both the natural and the spiritual, and God was able to impact him so powerfully. And there's also uh, Jackie Pullinger's book called uh, Chasing the Dragon, where she goes into China and was able to, you know, start a ministry, but between uh, drug addicts and prostitutes, and uh, and how the Holy Spirit ministered, and how uh, and how she was able to, you know, be both understand the natural dynamics of Hong Kong in China, and also you, she was able to see the spiritual dynamics. What was, uh, you know, what was the main concern in Hong Kong and those neighboring cities? So. These are two wonderful books. You can read about it if you'd like, and if you have time, right? All right. So then we looked at church planting, getting started. We looked at the survey phase. Today we'll get into uh, chapter eleven, talking about the launch phase. Now we've done our survey, we've done our preparation, we've had our core team, we've gone out as a core team, we have prayed, we have um, searched for a place. Right, we probably spend about six year, six months to one year just meeting in a small group, praying for the launch. And when you know that God has told you, okay, go, right, uh, let's start it. That is your launch phase, right? So you only launch once. Now you can't do a launch every two, three times, right? It's like launching a product. You launch a product into the market, you can't keep launching it. You launch it once, then you get new products, then you launch that. But in a ministry, in a church, you you have one launch. Right? Now, there are two options on how you launch. Number one option is you already have your core team. You have about maybe six or seven or maybe even 10 people. You announce to them, OK, next Sunday, this Sunday, will be the Sunday, the first Sunday of the church. Right now, remember that you have already shared with the core team. You have already shared the values, the vision, everything. So you can do it quietly. You can have, you know, just have a, uh, you know, even if it's a house in the house, or even if it's a small uh, hall that you have rented out, you can do it. You can go there, uh, have the service timing, uh, everything ready, uh, you know, uh, worship, uh, lyrics for the uh, worship, everything all the practical things have it ready and you can start with a simple way so uh, you can also tell the core team people you know hey uh, we're starting so feel free to invite people and come that is option one simple way option two is you have a special launch right where uh, for example six months you've been praying and you've uh, been praying and god says okay launch so what you can do is take another month and have a month of promotions, right? You can do newspaper inserts. You can, uh, you can do some kind of promotions in, uh, in you know, one-on-one -on -one promotions, or you can, 
reach out to a target audience that is one and then you can also have it you can launch as a healing service or a music concert uh, a gospel meeting right anything M make it big right so you you're basically doing a lot of promotion for the church right uh, uh, or you can start it off as a youth meeting uh, a youth concert music concert or a or a, a dance concert uh, anything whatever you feel like right but then again the word also should be there it should be like a church service as well so um you can choose that right uh, either a simple start or a uh, a big you know concert uh, with a lot of promotions and all of that now how apc started was in a very small way and so it was a uh, pastor and his family and a few others who got to know about the, that the church plant is going to happen apc is going to start so there were about uh, uh 12 people uh in the in the in the house uh, pastor's father's house small gathering very small um and i know that you know they did a little bit of i think it was newspaper inserts and from those newspaper inserts few of them got those invites and they found the place and they came so it was not something very grand like a music concert or anything right? but on the flip side um, if you look at uh, places like mangalore uh, what we did was we had like a music concert right uh, we hired a hall i think it was way back in 2002 uh, or 2002 2003 somewhere around that time uh, hired a hall said okay music concert few people came and then from the next Sunday, we said, OK, church is happening in this place. If you'd like to come, come. Right. So we've, we've done both of it, both, right? And both works. Uh, so the choice is entirely up to you. But just remember, if you're doing it in a big way, uh, you will need to have funds for, you know, uh, for, for the promotions, right? You'll need to have funds for reaching out uh, for newspaper inserts, for uh, either for that or for making the printouts available um uh, printing it out and and so all of this we, you must be prepared right um and then there are again other different approaches that you can try uh these are just two uh, that we have mentioned you can also try uh in a way of you know a fellowship a regular service with a fellowship meal right uh, or you can also try uh, you know um a sports uh, first sunday of a sports day Right uh, now, uh, this is this example. So I'm not saying you have to do any of these, but these are uh, ways that you can start. Now, here's important. First thing, the first church service, keep it simple. Right now, even as you keep it simple, remember not to. There's a saying, right? Uh, don't major on the minors or minor on the majors. Right. Uh, Keep it simple. Something new people will find easy to follow. Now, how can we keep it simple? So for example, you expect 20 people in, in your launch, in your first Sunday service. Right? So simple is choose the person who's leading worship. Make sure that that person is choosing simple songs, songs that everyone can sing. Right? And now, this is just an example, right? Simple songs. All of them can sing, right? not very complicated. Now, you may have a full band. You may not have a full band. You may just have one guitar or one keyboard with a couple of singers. That's all right. The point is, choose simple songs. Right? Uh, make it easy for people to follow. Right? So what you can do is you, have, you start off, you can either start with 10 minutes of prayer, right? Uh, it's after 10 minutes of prayer, 40 minutes of worship, then 10 minutes of your know, few announcements, and uh, you wouldn't need 10 minutes, but keep that time for 10 minutes. Uh, you're just explaining the vision of the church, and then the remaining time, maybe 45 minutes for God's word, ministry time close, keeping it simple. Now, why in the first service you're setting expectations your first service sets the expectations of the people what they can expect going forward 
in the church. Right? You're setting your expectation. Now, picture this. Right? Uh, sorry if this is going to be a, a bad example, but please picture this. Imagine it's your first Sunday. You're, you're, you're going to start the church this Sunday. And the projector is not working. There's no lyrics. The, the projector is not working. One. Or imagine this church service starts at 8 a.m. And it's 8, 5, and we haven't started yet. What's going to happen? You're setting expectations. So what will happen is those who are coming to the service will feel, anyway, church starts at 8. They normally start at 8, 5, or 8, 10. So I'll go to church at 8.30. What's happening? Expectations. Now, if you look at the positive side, if the church starts at 8 o'clock and you've got a new couple or a new two boys who've come in, two youth, right? Boys or girls, doesn't matter. Two youth have come and sat. And they say, okay, it's 8 o'clock. And they see sharp 8 o'clock you started. What happens? Expectations are set. So these youth or the couple is going to say, hey, this church, nobody had come. Only four or five of us were there. But they started at 8 a.m. So for them, it doesn't matter. Time is time. What's happening? Expectations are set. Right? One of the things that we can do in the launch phase, make sure that you have everything set up. And don't uh, uh, you know, avoid last minute works. Now, in a, you know, maybe many 15, 20 years ago, we would give printouts for songs. Okay, these are the songs you can sing. Now people have phones, right? And to have a projector is not a big deal, right? Or even if you can't afford a projector, it could be expensive or you don't have a projector screen, it's okay. What you can do is, you know, probably send the, uh, you have the lyrics ready with you, right? But make it simple because what you do now will last for a long time. Of course, over time, things in church will change the way we have service. But the, the initial expectations are very important. If you say start at 8, start at 8. If you say finish at 10, finish at 10. Right? Don't go on till 10.30. Oh, but we are in God's presence. No, that's OK. You gotta, we got to honor people's time. Right? Of course. It's a holiday. People want to go back. They have to look after other things. But you say 8 to 10, try to stay with 8 to 10. Start on time, end on time. right? Because what they see now, going forward, that's the expectation. Now, look at this. As a pastor, if you start off the, start off the first Sunday uh, with you know, too much of uh, the, instead of the word, you're giving too many examples, cracking jokes, and uh, trying to get the audience or the people to enjoy the sermon more than the word of God, what's happening? They're going to say, hey, this is what we can expect. We can expect a few jokes. We can expect this in the sermon. And uh, we can expect uh, this. expectations are set. Right? Uh, or what if uh, in a sermon, uh, you know, there's a uh, 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 preacher goes on in the first Sunday I'm talking about, right? Uh, talks about, you know, uh, finances and this is what we need. And then the, imagine the people who have just come here, you're just launching, you're saying what all you need, you know, what are the expenses in the church? No. And so be very sensitive uh, when you launch, right? Uh, share your vision. That is very important. Now, you may have a few new people coming in for the first Sunday. Share your vision. Now, the core team, you may have already shared it with them hundreds of times. That's all right. Share it again. Share the vision and show them how they can be part of the vision. Right. So, for example, you can say, hey, the vision that we have for... You know, as 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 we start this church, we may be twenty people here right now, but the vision that we have is we will be able to penetrate into all the spheres of influence in our city. We can be the salt. We will be the light. We are twenty people, but one day will come when we will be two thousand people, and you can be part of that vision. What are you doing? 
vision invigorates right oh man now we are 20 but there will be a time when you'll be 20000 or 2000 20000 people in church and it invigorates it catches them right welcome them to be part of the vision don't force them welcome them let your life speak right let your vision speak to them the vision that is there in your heart when you share it with uh, with that same intensity when you're able to when you really believe and trust your vision people will grasp that vision and join along with you right so be willing to share your vision be willing to uh you know uh, ask them to ask those who attend your church to uh, you know be welcome them to your vision share in the vision and let them know that hey we're going to raise up leaders it's not a one man show we're going to raise up leaders you can also be part of this we're going to start life groups we're going to start cell groups we're going to start bible study groups and uh, we're going to plant many other churches this is just the beginning right we we look to start four or five churches in the city and then we also look to going outside of the city blessing our nation we we, we want to see uh, the missions teams we want to see evangelism teams healing teams this is what we want to see and invite them to be part of it right but even as we do that let our focus everything that we do be focused on jesus it is very easy to get the focus on us right? so we're going to be talking hey this you know this is what we're going to do uh, it's very easy for the focus to be turned towards either church growth or the focus turned towards a person or the ministry itself or the things that we are doing in the ministry no the focus should be jesus remember what jesus says I am the vine, you are the branches. Though that they that stay or abide in me shall bear fruit. So remember that he is the vine, we are the branches. We never cut off from him. He is the focus. He is the one who's going to bless the ministry. He will bless our efforts in the ministry. Right? So these are very simple uh, points, but very important points. What you and I do in the initial stages will leave a mark in the person till the end. Right? I remember speaking to uh, an elderly uh, woman from our church, and she's been a member. And I got to know that she had attended the first Sunday of ABC service. First Sunday. And I, this happened, I think, in 2013, 14, when I got to, when I spoke to her many, many years back. And she's still attending ABC, right? Uh, and I asked her one thing. On the first Sunday, what is it that you remember? You know what is the first thing she said? She said, we started on time. That's the first thing she said. We started on time. And she also said, that the vision was shared right and the first sunday there was a request for volunteers needed <laughs> there were very few people in church but volunteers needed this different areas right and to date if you see we don't start our sunday services late we are always on time unless there is some unforeseen something that has happened that you know that it has to be delayed very rarely why because we're well prepared now we did it service one we're continuing to do that now what starts now will continue later and i remember speaking to this uh uh you know uh, this uh, person and she said on the first sunday the, the when the vision was shared everyone believed the vision there were 12 of them in the room what is the vision to be salt and light to the city of bangalore a voice to the nation the nations 
and the vision was to start many churches in Bangalore, many churches out of Bangalore, start missions. There were only 12 people, but there were people who captured that vision. Right. So don't look at what you have right now. You may have nothing with you. You may have a room with three people. If God is telling you to start, start. Be faithful and small, and God will give you bigger things. Right? Of course, you, you plan, prepare, but don't look at what you have now. I always say this, big doors open on small hinges. The, the hinges of the door are very small. It's not the size of the door. But the door is resting on those hinges. So when you open a door or close it, it's the hinges that are doing most of the work. So we must be, uh, we must keep everything focused on Jesus. Don't look at what we are now, but look at what God can do in the ministry for us, right? There are a few practical tips. Plan for follow up. Some of the things that we must do is uh, in welcoming new people is to follow up through their journey. So plan well. So one of the things that we do at APC is we have something called as first time visitors. We call it FTV, right? first time visitors. So they have a card. They fill up the card. Uh, uh, it has name, phone number, email address, uh, and prayer request as well. Right? So what we do is when we receive those cards, and over time, this process has been developed. right? But as of now, what we do is uh, once we get those cards, uh, we we have a three-step uh, procedure that we follow. Right? Step number one is, of course, those details are added on a on an Excel sheet. Uh, right now, we have uh, something called as a CHMS, which all our data goes there. But uh, you know, in, in your launching phase, you may not have all of those, you know, those softwares. But but you can just have a regular Excel sheet, maintain those records. Right? So you can have an Excel sheet, name, number, contact details, email address, uh, prayer request, and maybe even the area that age group area that they stay in. Right. So three step process. One is we have the welcome call. So we call them up and say, thank you so much for visiting our church. Trust you had a blessed time. Uh, we get to know about the person. And then we see the prayer request. We say, hey, you've sent in your prayer request. Let's, uh, I want to pray for you. Can we pray, pray for a moment? And then if the person, now, as you're talking to the person, you, you get to know whether um, he or she is interested or if she is part of another church, we tell them to be faithful there. But if they're not part of another church and we're looking for a church, we say, okay, please feel free to join us, see if this is where uh, you, you know, God wants you to be planted. Uh, and, and then we do a welcome call. So normally, if they are interested, we also connect them to a life group if they are interested. Right? We give them details. Then the following Sunday, oh, the, the, the Sunday comes, the next Sunday, if they come to church, it's wonderful. You talk to them. But we have a welcome call one. Then you have follow-up call one, and then follow-up call two. Now, what is happening? Through these calls, we are building a rapport. Now, there will be times when people will say, no, I want to go to this church, or I'm just visiting. So we just, you know, maybe you can mark it in your Excel sheet, do not call or do not uh, disturb already part of another church. And you can, you know, just mark it red or so you know, okay, this person, I don't need to follow up. But the others, you plan how you're going to, how and when will you welcome these visitors, right? Have a way of receiving their contact information. So basically what we do is the card, right? So you can, these are very simple pointers, right? Now, over time, we have learned this. So if we look at it now, we also have a, an online audience. So we have oh, apcwo.org slash FTV, first time visitor. So person who's watching online can just go there, fill in their details. We get their details via email. We give them a call, thank them, uh, pray for them. And right, they could be just watching us online. 
uh, that's all right. So there's just develop a way uh, of getting their details. Right? Uh, it's, it's a very simple thing. Right? So uh, have a place and time for them to interact formally and get to know at least few people in the church. Right. So when it comes to this portion, now remember the first time visitors, when you launch a church, when you got new people coming into the church, they must be number one priority to the church. Right? Now, imagine you got first time visitors, they've come to church. And then after the church service, you're saying, OK, why, would, why didn't the speaker work? Why is the projector like this? And they are just standing there, nobody to talk to. No. So what we have set in place now, again, I'm sharing all of this because it's over time we have learned, we have gone through our set of uh, challenges and failures, and we've learned over time. So even as you launch, you can do it on service one, first Sunday itself. You can start all of this, right? Now, since you have a core team, you can start something called as the welcome team or a follow-up team. Now, what does the welcome team do? They stand at the entrance and welcome those who are coming to church, right? So when even when the first time visitors details come to us, right? Uh, these the welcome team has already spoken to them, right? Uh, and after the service, we can also what we do is we tell our folks, you're new to church. We have a visitors welcome visitors lounge, FTV visitors lounge. Please meet with some of our volunteers there. They'll be able to interact with you. Now, since it's the initial phase of the church, it's you've just launched, maybe a couple of Sundays have gone by, it'll be good that as a pastor, you are also there, right? As the leader, the pioneer of the church, you'll be there. And over time, you build a team and you have the team to you know, look after. But of course, for prayers, uh, people will come to you because you are the leader of the church. They will come. That's all right. Right, uh, but what's happening? You're setting a strategy. Uh, 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 you're setting something in place, like a plan. Okay, this is what it is. We will have this. We will have a place or a visitors lounge, uh, and here people can ask questions. They can talk. New visitors, if they have questions about the church, they can come there talk to us. Right. Uh, again, in the initial phase, it'll be good as pastors to call up there. Of visitors now even now right after so many years uh, we have five locations right now in Bangalore so what we do is we ourselves make the calls to the first-time visitors right? we also have a member care team uh, but even the pastors make the call right? we do follow-up calls to the first-time visitors because they've come to church they've probably met you and they would probably prefer getting a you know uh, they would like it's it's nice to get a call from uh, the pastor of the church the leader of the church then you invite them back connect them to a small group right uh, now in the initial phase right you can start something small you can just have regular you know just cardboard pieces cardboard uh, kg cardboard uh, you know just small uh, cutouts and then you can ask them to write their name contact number email address and a prayer request at the back right? now over time you can get things right with your own branding right so you can put your church logo put your church name and uh, address and vision of the church over time you can do all that right because all of that involves money and planning and uh, but initial phases, just keep it simple, right? Uh, now, you may not have cordless mics. You may have just a wired mic. It's all right. right? You may not have uh, uh, you know, uh, a big stage to start off with. It's OK. Right? Start with what you have. Start simple. Right? And if you look at now, you know, uh, getting instruments and all of that, over time, we can improve ourselves, right? But the initial phase, it's OK to start small. Right? Because sometimes what happens is we feel, oh, man, uh, you know, look at this church. They're doing it so well. They have an LED screen. They have uh, you know, such good instruments. I also want to do that. Now, that's good. But must understand that this is happening after 20 years. It was not there 20 years back when they started, when we started. Right? So over time, we improve. 
So it's okay to start small and to start in a simple way. Right? But these are important things. Planning for how to follow up, starting uh, you know small teams like the welcome team, ushering team, right? Or, or maybe even a prayer team. Right? You may be 10 people. It's okay, form the team. The team will grow. Right? Uh, there'll be a time in your launch phase, all 10 of them will be in one team. That's okay. Right? Uh, don't feel, oh man, nobody's gone. It's okay. Let it be. You start small. And eventually the team will grow. What are you doing? You're setting in place this whole mindset that ministry, this church is not running by one person. There are teams. There are people involved. And together we're getting the vision. Together we are working on this vision. We're fulfilling the vision to be salt and light. Right? So over time, you look back. Uh, you know, after 10 years, you'll have many new teams, your, your existing teams would have grown, and you know that it is a team effort in this ministry, right? Did Jesus do this? Yes. The first thing he did after his 40 days of fasting, he came back and he chose the 12 disciples. First thing he did, right? What did the apostle Paul do? He said, I'm going to launch out in ministry took Barnabas, second uh, missionary journey, took Timothy and Silas. Wherever he went, he went as a team. That's God's design, right? So uh, that's how we can plan for follow-up. It's very important what we do. Welcome call, follow-up one, follow-up two, and then we uh, you know, connect them to a team. Uh, or even if they decide to move on, we just uh, feel free. We don't force anybody. Right. Any questions on this? Right. The first service, the first launch. It's very exciting. Right. It is an exciting time. Uh, you know, your heart is so, uh, you know, so joyful for God's faithfulness. Uh, but it's also important to press on through those after the first service, after one month, after two, two months, after a year. You may see the church is growing. Sometimes the church may take time to grow. It's all right. Stay with the vision. Continue to minister to those who are there, right? Uh, you know, trust your people, trust your church members, right? Uh, give them responsibilities. I right? believe in their in what they are doing for you as well, right? Okay, let's get into chapter twelve. Before that, any questions on this launch phase? First service. No questions. Okay. Okay, I understand that all of us have, uh, you know, are making a note and understanding this. Uh, it's, it's very important that we, you know, uh, apply this when we are starting off. Okay, chapter twelve. Uh, uh, we did this in the uh, in the first uh, semester. We did a little bit of lifestyle evangelism. We talked about urban evangelism and urban urban missions. Uh, but this, uh, let's quickly look at a few aspects here, right? Now, prior to and, and also after the launch of a church, of your of the local church, the core team and the local church must engage in urban evangelism. We must engage. Right? We must be able to uh, uh, evangelize, build evangelism teams, right? And, and again, we teach as leaders, we form teams, we teach people in the church, right? Uh, and urban missions, urban evangelism, both these words are interchangeable. Uh, and these are different methods of uh, bringing the gospel to people, right? But even as we do this, remember, wholesome methods are spirit-led, legal, and ethical. Legally, we talked about it. Register your church. Register your ministry. Be spirit-led. Be ethical. I don't say this is just a a, a service. Uh, you know, in, when you're inviting people to church, don't say no. This is just a service. Uh, just some youth getting together. Don't say that. Tell them it's a church service, and this service is for people. Uh, it's talking about. We're talking about the Bible. We're talking about Jesus. It's a Christian church, right? Uh, so be ethical. 
we become all things to people in order to reach them, be culturally sensitive, be culturally relevant. What works in one place may not work in another place. So again, just be wise in that, right? Uh, even as you uh, begin to evangelize urban missions, certain places, uh, online digital uh, marketing may work. In certain places, no. Street evangelism or reaching out to schools, colleges may work. So you see what works, right? Uh, so there's a question here. What hinders us from stepping into people's world? Right, uh, you know, often at times, if we are in ministry pioneering phase, we we are so we are in a certain world, right? This is the church. This is the ministry. This is how it should be. One day, all that is good, but we need to step into their world to reach out to them. If I have a vision to reach out to corporates all across the city, I need to step into their world. Now, how do I do it? It doesn't mean you have to join the corporate and get a job. But what you can do is begin to understand what is the demographics of corporate sectors. One thing we know is work-life balance that is missing. Stress in the workplace, right? Uh, people are unfair treatment uh, or, or unfair no opportunities, right? So we begin to understand what they are going through. Step into their world. Right, uh, and and we don't we we seek not to intentionally offend people, uh, but minister in such a way to draw them to Christ. Uh, we do ministry where you know Paul writes in Second Corinthians six three and four in a way that there is no opportunity to blame. He said we were blameless. We worked with our own hands. We made our own food. We ate of our own. We, we, we looked after ourselves. We never asked for anything. We never asked you for money. We never asked you for material. We looked after ourselves. We were never a burden for you. Why? Because he wanted to do ministry uh, blameless. So God has commissioned us to preach, share the gospel, share about Jesus Christ. Uh, even if we are told not to do it, right? We may, you know, all these bills that are coming up, they may come up stringent, even more stringent bills may come up, but we must make sure that the gospel is shared, right? Uh, and when we are preaching, uh, we, we make sure that we, are, we do not violate people right meaning their rights their property their time their sentiments don't violate them right honor them they may be somebody who's very small right but honor them honor their time honor their their, their rights right um, and then we identify and develop different strategies for different age groups different areas in the city uh, different spheres. We have seven spheres of influence, seven mountains or seven spheres. Uh, and then we develop strategies. How do we enter into these spheres of influence, leveraging tools that we have? Uh, one of the things that really, uh, you know, I was that really struck my mind was the use of Instagram and Facebook, right? Uh, over the last six months, especially right now, uh, in the church that we are in, uh, in the east of Bangalore. It's a corporate sector, as I've mentioned. Uh, we had about you know, 30 odd FTVs over the last six months. And I'm just giving an example, right? So out of that about 30, I'm just giving a rough number. It's not exactly 30. But out of that 30, 95% of them came through Facebook ads and Instagram. 95% of them. Right. And the other 5% was, uh, we know, we had a worship evening once. And then we had uh, uh, some of our church folks, they invited people. 95% right? of them came via Facebook ad, via promotion on Instagram, social media. Right. So leverage tools, see what you can do. Right. And now uh, it is it is said that, you know, uh, uh, certain city, India is the highest uh, number of Instagram users in the world. We've got the highest number, right? Uh, now, this is a, uh, 
this is something that I read a couple of years ago. I don't know if this is the same, but uh, it's one of definitely one of the highest number of Instagram users in the world, right? So leveraging, right? And then you got different age group. Uh, you got the teens. You got children. You got teens. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll stop here. We'll start next week. Uh, tomorrow, we'll start with strategies for different age groups. So we have children, uh, children. then we have teens, then we have youth, then we have middle-aged, then we have uh, senior citizens. right? And, and so we look at different strategies. But what works here may not work in different cities. So we'll be open. To the different ideas, but we look at uh, strategies that we can use to help us build our ministries. Right, right. Any any questions? Any thoughts? Right. So feel free to you know uh, if you have uh, any questions about church planting and uh, or any thoughts that you have. Feel free to uh, you know. I know. I would. I. Uh, we can probably next class take some time to share like about you know your plans as well it's all right even if you haven't chalked it out or haven't really made the plan uh, a solid plan but we can share our plans right and and see how we can uh, you know go about fulfilling what god wants us to do right all right thank you so much have a great day ahead i'll see you tomorrow god bless